What's up data pipeliners, this is Data Engineer One. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how you can combine multiple CSV files into a single pandas data frame. This is a question that gets asked a lot, and I think it's a great one to just take a look at how we can use the partition data set for this purpose. Let's go ahead and get started. So I have here the Iris Pandas example pipeline. And it comes with, of course, our very favorite Iris CSV. Um, in this case, what I've done is I've manually split up the CSV into the Virginica, Setosa, and Versicolor portions. So these are the different species inside of the CSVs. In order to grab all of these CSVs, the best way to do this is actually to use either the partitioned data set or the incremental data set. Now, the difference between the two is that the partitioned iris data will actually lazily load your partition pieces of data so that means that when you actually load the data set itself it doesn't load all of the values that it holds however the incremental data set will load all the values uh, the reason why you'd want to use incremental over partitioned is that the incremental allows you to do um, checkpointing in your data so you can figure out which ones have been calculated and which ones have not uh, we already have a video talking about incremental data set as well as partition data set, so I highly recommend you take a look at those if you want a little bit more detail. But here, in this case, we're just going to be using the pandas CSV data set inside of the partitioned iris data set, and we're going to be also using the same thing inside of incremental iris data set. So now that we have these data sets available, let's go ahead and create a node and a pipeline for ourselves. This is just going to be a very simple example, so no need to create anything super fancy. Now I've created our initial node functions for combining the CSV files. Take a look here at how I've created the signature for the partitioned and the incremental CSVs. The partitioned CSVs actually uses a callable, so we would actually call the value in order to get the CSV data frame that we want. Whereas the incremental CSV, you do not have to call the value, you just get the data frame directly. To pass these guys in, we actually can take advantage of pandas concat. Pandas comes with a concatenation function, which will take any number of panda data frames and put them all together into a single data frame. So we're going to be using that in our case for both partitioned and incremental. In the partition case, however, we need to do one extra step we need to make sure we call the value of the dictionary in order to get the pandas CSV back. And then in the incremental case, there's no need to do so. Now, this is the Pythonic way of doing it. Let's go ahead and expand these functions just for clarity's sake. And now we can also monitor the actual values here just to prove that we're really concatenating things. And so we see here, we have our two different versions of our combination functions. We have a partitioned version and the incremental version. I'm printing out the length of the rows as well as the name of the CSV. The name comes from the key value that is inside of the dictionary. And that dictionary gets its key value from the older path. So the setosa.csv is going to be a key, versicolor.csv is going to be a key, and then virginica is also going to be a key when it comes back. And so we should be able to see those file names when we print that out here. And for the final node, we're just going to go ahead and print out the um, length of the final concatenated pipeline. And we're going to make the pipeline called cat. And there it is. We have our four node pipeline, which includes our, our combination of incremental CSVs, the combination of the partition CSVs, and then an output which prints the final result of the rows. So let's go ahead and give that a Kedra run. And there you have it, folks. We have the incremental 50-50-50, the partition 50-50-50, and then the final output of 150. I hope this was informative for you guys. If you guys made it this far, make sure you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding. And I'll see you guys at EuroPython 2020, or I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>